so today we will be combining the Rhine books uh, and the Rhine tables. Uh, and uh, I call it as a subtitle from onset chains, that's Sheng Lei, through initial class, that's Sheng Mu. Yeah. So, um, so that's what we're doing. We're going to move from the Sheng Lei to the Sheng Mu. And uh, using the terminology from the first class, uh, we're going to use the Rhine. Uh, tables as our imposers and the Ryan books as our transposers, and then just see what happens, right? Okay, so I have to put here. Okay, so first, you know, just uh, I think a little bit of repetition every day, you know, is good. So, uh, the Ryan books, the Chayun from 601. The Kan Yu Wu Chue Sheyun from 706, and then the Guan Yun from uh, 1107 to 1108, right? And then the one I sent you that uh, I'm asking you to translate a Ryan, uh, sorry, a Hong Kong group from is this middle one, which is the oldest complete version. Okay. And then uh, the information explicit in the Ryan books. The tone, the rhyme category, and the homophone group. Uh, and then implicitly, we have the rhyme category using the rhyme chains, the onset chains, which are our shang that we're going to talk about today. And then uh, the division, which I haven't talked about yet, uh, which but are somehow like the ranks of the rhyme uh, tables. Yeah. Okay. And then the rhyme tables, uh, the Yunjing and the Qi Yin Re, both published in. 1161. Yeah. And then uh, what information is given in the tables, the rhyme category, the initial category, which we'll call Shengmu, uh, the rank, and whether or not it, it has a medial W, right? So, like, like one thing I'll point out is whether or not something has a medial W is only available as information from the rhyme tables, not from the rhyme books. Uh, okay. So, let's uh, make these two sources interact. Yeah, so we're going to impose line table initials on the line book onset spelling chains. So what do I mean by that? Well, first, I want to straighten out some terminology because I think it's important. Like in the same way, I, I, I'm just distinguishing between ranks for the line tables and uh, divisions for the line books. I think it's just I want to have terms, you know, have very specific meanings for what we're doing. Yeah. So an onset chain is what is indicated by linked font chain onset styles, right? So it's it's whatever that thing is that, that made uh, Mr. Lu link the spellings of characters with uh, onsets, right? And then I think this is akin to, just in terms of an, in, in your, your intuition, akin to an allophon in early middle Chinese. But, you know, uh, we shouldn't push that analogy too firmly because, of course, uh, the sources aren't using modern phonological theory. Uh, and then initial category is what is indicated as an initial by the rhyme tables. So that's, you know, when it, when it said, this is a voice bilabial stop. Yeah, I'm calling that an initial category. Uh, and that's akin to a phoneme in late Middle Chinese, right? Because there's several hundred years between the sources. And then I'm going to call an initial class an equivalence class of onset chains. So I think that's akin to phonemes in early Middle Chinese, which is to say that uh, we, we said last time there's, I think, 51 onset chains, and there's probably not 51 distinct uh, onsets phonologically in early Middle Chinese. So we have to kind of gather these chains together somehow, uh, and those equivalence classes of initial chains are what I'm calling initial classes. And then in, in general, in, in Nathan's, you know, hybrid Chinese speak English, I use category for later sources and class for earlier sources that are indicating the same thing. So 
So like rhyme category is what I say for middle Chinese and, and rhyme class is what I say for old Chinese. Uh, but here we're just dealing with uh, late middle Chinese and early middle Chinese. So, so we want to move, basically moving from the Shangle to the Shangmu is moving from the onset chains to the initial classes using the initial categories. Yeah, is that, is that terminology okay? Yeah. All right, so uh, so there are 36 initials according to the Rhine tables, yeah? and these are they. So um, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of all I have to say there. So uh, I'll point out that there's there's an F series. Um, which we're going to get rid of. Okay, so the Rhine tables, in fact, only have twenty-three columns. Like, like we saw this. If you if you just open the Rhine table, it has twenty-three columns. So they say in the beginning there are thirty-six initials, and they only list twenty-three columns. So what's going on there? Well, they don't distinguish the labial stops and the labial dental fricatives. In terms of, we don't have you know a, a, the 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 on a particular chart of a rhyme table, if you go table, uh, it, it will just say labial, and then it won't it won't distinguish these ones are labial stops, these ones are labial and fricatives. And similarly, uh, it doesn't distinguish the uh, dental and retroflex stops, uh, and it doesn't distinguish the dental and retroflex siblings. Now, these things are all in complement distribution according to, to their ranks. So that's why you know, they're able to, um, you can see it as just a way of saving space on the chart, if you like. Or you can see it as a phonemic mouth, whichever way you want. Okay. So, yeah. So, so this is just, again, to kind of familiarize you with the source, or that, that we looked at it a few days ago. So it's just like, think, okay, if you ask someone, uh, you know, who wrote the who wrote the Yunjing, how many initials are there in Chinese? Maybe he'll say there are uh, 36, or maybe he'll say there are 23. Uh, both are valid answers given some uh, complementary distribution, right? Where, where the 36 is a little bit more probably phonetically precise and the 23 is more uh, abstract. Okay, so now, we actually do what uh, I've been promising to do to move from an onset chain to an initial class. And we start by looking at this character. So it is described as having a D initial on chart one of uh, the Qin Yule, Qi, Qi Yin Lue, and it is described as a voice dental, so, so muddy and then uh, tooth sound on chart one, the yun chain. So, this, so we're just collecting information about this character's initial, right? Uh, and then we look at its uh, onset chain in the, in the chain. Okay, so uh, this is its onset chain and there it is, yeah? So uh, if we've convinced ourselves if this starts with a D, then we get the rest of these, right? And we get, just remember, these are all used as Fanji onset spellers. So we also get all of the hundreds of characters that use each of these as an onset speller, right? And then we say all those characters start with a D. And this is that process of, you know, the imposition is coming from, uh, from the fact that this character is in the Rhine tables, and then the transposition is coming from the fact that uh, these are all linked in Fanche onset speller chains in the chain. Is that okay? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So you use the phonetic information of the Rhine table. The Rhine tables, yes. To interpret these change of chains. Chains. Of books. Exactly. And is there any mismatch? Because you you said as well, is later differently or do you need to make it? Yes, we will see some some Changes. mismatches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is just sort of it's it's um 
I mean, I don't want to say it's the only way to do it, but but it's it's you know you you in the Rhine books all you have are uh, equivalence classes of characters. Right? You can say, oh, these characters are linked by their initial chains, and these characters are linked by their Rhine chains, but you have no way of knowing how any of them are connected. Uh, so it's we have to pull in this this explicit phonetic information from the. But the distinction between very real things and very real things will become. Yeah, we 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 have to. It turns out that there is a difference. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's a total of thirteen uh, cases where there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between a rhyme book onset chain and a rhyme table initial category. Okay. So we saw one, which is why I chose it. In this case, you know, like if you look for things in the rhyme tables that start with D, they're all going to get you to this chain in the in the uh, in the rhyme books. Yeah. So this is a, a simple case, and then we can say, you know, grosso modo, uh, a D in early Middle Chinese is a D in late Middle Chinese, and these are the words in early Middle Chinese that started with D. Uh, I mean, these words and all of those that feed into them. Right? Okay. And we can do that with ta, with da, with na, with ta, with ta, with da, with na, with ga, with na, uh, with sa, with sa, with sa, and with ra from nya. Okay, now I'm already sort of, you know, um, Pulling that card up from my sleep, but uh, uh, so this is recognized as a separate initial in um, in uh, late Middle Chinese in the rhyme tables, uh, but uh, we can we can decide that it's a nya in the early Middle Chinese, uh, and maybe I'll leave that actually as a homework assignment. Uh, but it, how to do it will become clear. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to choose a slightly more complicated case, right? So we had, oh, let's just go back to this one. Said so we have, I, I think we said, said we had 51 Shanglei. So 13 of them we've just dealt with. Yeah. But what about all the other ones? Whatever 51 minus 13 is. Yeah. So we're going to look at a, a, a more tricky one now, which is. Uh, let's say L phenomena. Yeah. So the character Lai is the name of an initial class in the Qi in Rui. Yeah. So it's because they use this acrophonic way of, of writing things. So it's actually, you know, this character is the word for L in the Qi in Rui. And it's described as an initial liquid resonant uh, in, on, uh, in, in, in the Yin Jing on chart 13. So we're going to say this is an L, and we will look at what it's connected to to find other Ls. Okay. So uh, you've already seen this one. This is the Shunlei uh, in which Lai participates. So great. So we know that this Shunlei, you know, all of these characters and all of the characters that they serve as initial spellers for. Uh, start with an L, uh, but that's not everything uh, because uh, the reading of this character is described as a initial liquid resonant on chart uh, 23 of the Yuji and as Lai, as L on uh, chart 23 of the Qi Yin Lui, and it you see, it's not in this chain. Yeah. So, what do we do? Well, let's put its chain on there. Yeah. So, we have now two chains that we think, let's say, are in the running for uh, L. Yeah. Now, the reading of this character uh, is. Described as an initial liquid resin on chart uh, 23 of the engine. 
and as lie on chart 23 of the GD embedded. Uh, and there, there it is. Yeah. So we have now three chains that uh, are all L. Yeah. So now the question is did early Middle Chinese have three kinds of L or not? Yeah. And uh, uh, all right. So, yeah. So that's just me now making them all the same. Uh, you know, size and color. Okay, so those are our three chains. So uh, we, so yeah, so here's just basically summarizing what we just learned, which is if we look at uh, the relationship between the line uh, tables and the line books, we have uh, what the table says is L. This is L. But in the Rhine books, we have these three um, disjunct sets of characters. So just as a kind of maybe keeping track of the information or as a provisional hypothesis, then we can say we have three kinds of L. But do we really have three kinds of L? So I think there are three options in terms of how we analyze the situation like this. We can say it's a meaningless textual artifact, right? It's like, well, you know, he happened not to have ever used, you know, like, I mean, you understand, right? Let me just go back to the like, light. If Mr. Liu had had 15 more minutes, maybe he would have made a, a, a character, he would have added another character to his book that had an L in it that somehow linked these two. That's the sort of, well, it's just a philological artifact. Yeah. Uh, maybe they're distinct allophons of a single phony. Yeah. Maybe we have like a clear L and a, a dark L, something like that. Uh, and then you would have some reason to think, oh yeah, there's a reason why these uh, these L, these, these, these Shumle are not linked. Uh, and then you would expect sort of things like maybe they come before different vowels. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a third option is that maybe we had actually the same phony. We had like l and you know tl or something. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that was merged by the time of the rhyme uh, tables. Yeah. And in general, I think these three options are available whenever we have more than one uh, shangle for every shangmu in the in the rhyme tables. So we want to figure out which one is it in each case, right? So this is where uh, Chun Le, Chun, sorry, Chun Li comes to the rescue. And this is a portrait of uh, Chun Li. Uh, it's from a, a very nice YouTube video. that kind of explains what I'm explaining today uh, by, by this guy named Josh, I think, who has, uh, has a YouTube channel called Native Land. Uh, so anyhow, uh, I just thought since I had this portrait of Chun Li, I would uh, share it with you. So he wrote a book called the uh, Chen Yun Tao, not a very creative name for a book, but, but uh, it does what it says on the tin. Yeah? And he wrote it in uh, 1842. So uh, actually, we've already seen his work. He's the first one to really follow these uh, these uh, onset and rhyme uh, speller chains in the original, right? So he he went and did all this, you know, what we can do now with Gephi and the spreadsheet, uh, which he did in a very meticulous way uh, back in 1842. Okay. So let's see what his principles are for deciding whether to unite Shangle or not. Yeah, so he has three principles. I don't think I'll go through all three right now. But you will see all three in the course of today or maybe tomorrow. So uh, I'll just read this. This is principle one. For an onset speller and the character that it glosses share the same initial, uh, therefore, the use of the self same onset speller, the mutual use of onset spellers, or complementary use of onset spellers indicate the same initial class. So uh, let's just look at those cases. This is the self-same onset speller, right? And we've actually already been using this principle 
uh, without you know declaring the principal. This character and this character both use this character as their offset spelling. So we're presuming that they have the same initial. So that's the um, that's the the self same onset spell. Right? And then this is the mutual onset spell, right? So if if this one uses this one and this one uses this one, then we say they're the same. They have the same onset. Now uh, the complementary one, there's no easy way for me to represent one in a diagram. Uh, uh, but uh, like, well, I mean, it would be like this, right? Um, but these are only complementary if they're complementary with respect to something else, right? like uh, rhyme classes, for instance. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm not demonstrating with a, a simple graph uh, what uh, complementary means, but I don't see how I would do it. Yeah. If you have, uh, you know, uh, inspiration as to what a good visual representation of two complementary onset chains would be, you let me know. Uh, okay, so now let's look at, so now we've heard this first principle. Now let's see how he actually discusses L. So, this is it. So just, you know, just read it for a few seconds. Okay. So now, uh, who wants to translate? <laughs> okay. Uh, so I uh, have translated and, and I tried to format it in a way that sort of makes it easier to read. I hope it works for you. I'm not sure. So he says 15 characters, and then he gives the characters, belong to the same category. Although this set does not connect with this other set, and a third set uh, connects with neither of those two sets, all of these characters are actually in the same class. So just to look back at our picture, he's saying, yeah, yeah, I acknowledge there are three sets that uh, we have reason to all call L, but I think they're all the same sound. As what he says. So why does he think that? So that's his kind of thesis, and now it becomes the, the evidence. So because these two characters are mutually used, and these other two characters are mutually used, uh, these three pairs cannot connect with each other. Now um, that's uh, here, this is this is the things you talking about, right? So you say here we have a loop. That's the way I think about it in graph theory, right? So here we have a loop. Here we have a loop, and here we have a loop, which means these three chains can't connect. Now, just I mean, yeah, exactly. Like imagine that they connected. Like imagine that these could connect. Well, if it, if then, then, then you couldn't have a loop here, right? Because you would all end up over there. Um, so I think these are quite interesting. Actually, I, I sort of think if I had the time and inclination, I would look into it in terms of intellectual history because this is a graph theory uh, point, right? He's, this is a, a totally abstract uh, like theorem of mathematics that um, Chun Li has put forward here. So uh, you know maybe uh, he's an unrecognized. You know, pioneer in graph theory, and I think that is exciting, right? And, and I also think it's it's a great it's a great point, right? Like as soon as you allow yourself a loop, then you're going to have disjointed chains. Now that doesn't mean that just because there are loops you can join them together. It's just a kind of point, right? That like um, if we didn't have loops, we would have a much stronger case for keeping them separate. That's maybe the right way to put it. Okay, so now he also says, as one finds, and then that's into the point, this is a quote, right? This is a quote from the chain. As one finds, Lun is Lu plus uh, Um, Gun, under uh, this rhyme category, Um, which is the, that's where, here, here, the rhyme category is functioning as the name of the chapter in the chain, right? So he's saying, as you find this quote, in this chapter, 
Uh, and you find this fifth quote in this chapter. Uh, now we actually have to pay attention to them. In this one, we see Lyung, which is lick, lick plus chung, also has the reading Lung, which is lick plus tung, right? So uh, as you saw, alternate readings of characters are mentioned uh, in principle in both places, right? So we look up Lyung, and then it tells us, oh, it's either read Lyung or it's read Lung, right? Uh, well, but now we get two two ways of spelling lung. One is lick plus fung, and one is lu plus fung, right? Uh, and then under this prime category, that's where this quote comes from. This prime category. Uh, so the result is that this spelling lick plus fung equals lung is equivalent to this spelling lung plus fung equals lung. Yeah. So now he's managed to connect these things, even though they aren't connected to Fanche uh, onset spellers. Instead, they're connected through what we call uh, Yo Yin. So, uh, what it means, you know, what's, uh, what's the, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's on almost every slide I, I've had in the last couple of days, but it gets, I can't remember how to write uh, Yeah, so I'll just write it pretty pink. Yo yi. Yeah, okay. So th that means also red, right? Also red. Uh, so he uses these, this is Mr. Chung Lee, he uses these annotations of alternate readings of characters to, if you like, sort of discover. New Fanche onset spellers. Um, Why wasn't the second reading known already in the other Fanche? Because these are. Because it's some kind of minor Fanche. Wait, 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 wait. So let's just see. So the question is so what's the problem here? This is the same character in this, right? So so here we we would have expected him to give another punche for this reading, which he didn't do. Apparently. And then you say, well, you know, he didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but when he gave this reading, he mentioned uh, that there was this reading. So so I bet that uh, that this one's probably the, the more prominent reading because. Because, because if you're giving a less prominent reading, you would mention the more prominent reading, right? That's my guess. But, uh, but you know, Mr. Lu wrote the wasn't a total, he wasn't a machine, right? He wasn't. Uh, uh, so, in any case, but notice that it's the, yeah, the, 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 the other thing you could ask yourself, which is what I asked myself, is why didn't he use this function here? Because that would be, you know, that would, that would be like if I were his editor, I would have said, look, uh, if you use this fun check in the main entry for that reading, you should use the same fun check when you mention it somewhere else, right? That would be sort of good practice as an as a academic, yeah? Uh, but I think that suggests he was like making them up as he was going along. Now, I mean, probably not. In some cases, we're checking uh, pre existing books, but. Um, if, you know, you know, uh, we're we're making use of the source as it exists in the sense that, like, it would have been also nice if there were no loops, right? There, like, it would have been nice if he had just used the same onset speller for every onset phonologically, right? Uh, but uh, Mr. Lu was not. His goals were different than our goals, yeah. <laughs> uh, and in, in this case, it's good he was a little inconsistent because that inconsistency is what allows us to. Um, to put in these new connections, yeah. So they're not really magic. I mean, it's just another punch here that makes the connection. No, no, it's not another punch. Here. That's the point. So, so, so this has a punch, here, yeah, and uh, these had punches, but like, if we look. Up this character and make a funky chain, we'll never get to this character. Right? So it gives us a, an operation 
other than pancake chains, which we can call the yogin operation. Yeah. And, and here I represent it with a different colored uh, arrow. Uh, uh, yeah. So um, and the blue arrows don't include the blue arrow characters with fun chain. So there it is. It's only fun chain, but not. Yeah. So the so so being so a blue link means this character has as its fun chain onset speller yeah. this character. Now I'm only just to save space and make it look clearer and to save myself a lot of time. I'm only putting characters up that are in fact used as onset characters, right? So there's like hundreds of other characters that will point to this one, and hundreds of other characters that will point to this one. Uh, but we're not interested in those because they don't give us any information, right? It's only the spellers that themselves that give us information. So if I, you know, if I look up this character, I get to this one. If I look up this one, I get to this one. If I look up this one, I get back to this. Yeah, that's how we. It's not that rare. One character occurs in different sections. Correct. The book, and it's... then may just have different functions. Right? Correct. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. No. Okay. But just to say, I mean, it's not rocket science. <laughs> uh, but. But it needs to happen, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, so now uh, I think it's orange, right? So now I've introduced these orange uh, arrows, which means uh, can be linked through this yo yin operation. So now we have linked these two, uh, and we can uh, we can maybe say that they that, that, that there were not uh, three kinds of elves in uh, early Middle Chinese, at uh, maximum, as far as this presentation is gone, there are only two kinds of elves. Right? Question, was uh, Chun-Li uh, consciously um, using old, uh, the um, Middle Chinese? Was he trying to figure out uh, how it was pronounced? Is he going by some sense of how it was pronounced in the Tang Dynasty? Or is he using his own uh, pronunciation, knowing that Li is, uh, you know, is pronounced uh, with the same L as uh, Lu or something. Um, the uh, like, I think the best way to think of it is he was using the the Yunjin, like like we are, right? Like, of course, he knew Chinese, uh, and many of you do, and you can just see that all these characters are with the L, right? <laughs> um, but uh, we're trying to be, you know, uh, exact, right? So uh, it's better to use a source from the 12th century than to use a source from the 19th century, like his own knowledge of Chinese, or a source from the 21st century, which would be our own knowledge of Chinese. Uh, so, so, so I think it's best to understand him as doing exactly what we're doing here. Um, and of course, he still didn't uh, use IPA or anything like that, or, or any kind of romanization. So what he was interested in is the kind of structural relationship between uh, the rhyme tables and the rhyme books. And until this time, people had just kind of assumed that the 36 initials of the rhyme tables were the same as the uh, implicitly given uh, initials of the rhyme books. And then he said, you know, to assume is to make an ass of you and me. Right. Um, that's how you spell it, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that was something that, you know, my school teachers all said it to me. <laughs> so I thought maybe he would know it. But, uh, but so he, he was an, an, a good empiricist and wanted to check. Is it true that, uh, that, the, that the phonology, if you like, of the tables is the same as the phonology of the books? And this is how he went about checking that. And then he discovered that they're not. And so far, actually, we're discovering that they are. <laughs> um, but that's because I'm saving the surprise until the end, right? Um, but I think this, this and, and then basically, I, I showed the case of D, where it's dead easy. And then I'm showing this case of, of, of L, where it's not dead easy, where you need to use these yo yin, right? But it's still, as, as, as you were saying, it's not rocket science. 
Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so this is just further, yeah, basically what I'm doing is putting these graphs in the middle of this long quote from him so we can just see what he's talking about, right? So he continues, uh, one out the outgoing functions uh, lay uh, under the rhyme category A and win uh, or lay under the rhyme category in. Uh, so, one, yeah, one finds both of those things. So the result of lit plus K lay is equivalent to that of long plus A, which is lay, right? Uh, therefore, the three characters, this one, this one, and this one, belong to the same initial class. So basically, he's given us another yo yin, uh, and then I put that one in there as well. So and that theory, it could be possible that this character has three readings. But yeah. So, but then uh, the, the rhyme book for the set though. Yeah. Like not only the rhyme is different, but also the initial. So, uh, Yes, that can happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in theory. Yeah, but 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 that's not. But that wouldn't matter, right? Because we're not using like in this case, lay is one reading and win is another reading. We're not using the fact that these have the same initial. We're not using that. What we're using is this. If under this reading, he says, "Oh, there's another reading," yeah. Yeah. which and this reading appears twice with two different functions. So what we're you using, have, you're assuming that uh, second reading is the same as for the second reading. Well, correct. So reading C is the same as reading A. Yeah, correct. We're, we're, assuming, assuming, is, we're assuming reading C is the same as reading A. And maybe it isn't, which is which is exactly why I need to, you know, uh, have a different color here, right? Because because in this case, what I'm assuming is that uh, if this one is used to spell the initial of this one, then they have the same, uh, they have the same initial. I think that is a very weak assumption. Right? Whereas in this one, I'm assuming that if something occurs twice, and in one of those two places it says there are two readings, that the, that the other reading is the one that occurs in the other place, which is a stronger assumption. Yeah. Um, and like I mean, and but I think this is sort of I don't know. In some ways, the 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 point is forced, right? Saint Augustine said, "Crede ut intelligas." You must believe in order to understand, right? <laughs> so uh, that's uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, if you, if you don't, if you feel reluctant to make this kind of ethical commitment, if you like. Well, that's fine. Then you just get a, a different middle Chinese than Chinese got. Yeah? Um, and yours will have more L's. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so we did that slide already. And then we did this one. Wait, did my, is it right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so these are all, oh, and then, oh, gosh, yeah. It was, I was, <laughs> How could I possibly not remember that? No, because it's this is yen, right? Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I was mixing up yin and yen because they're quite similar and mean by similar. Yeah. Uh so so these are, you know, so so now we've done it with L, right? we which is to say, what have we done? We've gotten the uh initial category of the rhyme tables to match the a equivalence class of Shangle. In this case, we have three Shangle, and we uh, uh, equivalence them. That's not an English word, but you know. Um, yeah, I don't, we've made them equivalent, yeah, uh, using this yo yin operation. Uh, I mean, and the, the the, the mathematical operator in terms of set theory is modular, right? These, these three uh, Shanglei are equivalent modular yo, the yo yin operation. Right? So, I mean, that's how I mean, I was for a short period of time an undergraduate math major, so <laughs> I'm always sort of tempted to 
to, <laughs> to sort of think it's clearer to talk in that way, yeah. Um, but, uh, but anyway, you get the idea, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's basically, you know, um, we, we, we've come a certain distance together. And now I'm going to start looking at, because so far the D example and the L example, we've said these are the same, right? They're the same in early Middle Chinese and late Middle Chinese. So now let's look at some differences. Okay, so uh, the labial dentals. So the practice of the unit, as I mentioned, lists the labial dentals, but not the body of text. So that's already sort of, you know, if, if, the, if the labial and the labial dental were really different, then they probably wouldn't have put them under the same header in the rhyme tables. Yeah. So, uh, and then if we look at you know just other sources, earlier sources, label dentals are not listed in the fragments from the Wang uh, attributed to the uh, ninth century Buddhist monk Shouhen, and uh, and he lists the initials. Right. So 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 basically, this fragment of his is analogous to the 36 initials of the Yunjin, but he doesn't list the layer dental. So that's, for, you know, for the purposes of our time together this afternoon, I think there's already enough information to say the layer dentals are late. Yeah. But properly speaking, if we are going to accept the first point, uh, then we need to prove that the dental and the rectal tract stops are separate, right? Because because the Yunjing also doesn't distinguish in its mise en page uh, between the dentals and the retroflexes. So, in order to prove to ourselves that those are distinct in, um, in uh, early Middle Chinese, I would have to show that their Shang Lei don't have any uh, yogi, for instance. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I can't do that yet. I can't allow myself. That because we haven't talked about the ranks uh, or the divisions yet, and and actually I'm just going to draw that here. Like 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 <laughs> uh, it's not very interesting to say oh some of the P's can be the S yeah. Um, I also think that uh, what you could do is you could find Shang uh, Lei that link uh, P's and S, except you can't do that because they're not distinguished in the Yunjing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so it. Turns out to be a little bit trickier than uh, than you want, but look, you know, there were no there were no X in early Middle Chinese. I hope I've convinced you of that. If not, that's your problem. Yeah. Uh, but that's considered uh, one reason I'm touching on is that's considered one of the, the you know, things that Chun Li did was was figure out that there were no labor dentals. Uh, but what he's really famous for is separating these, if this is a, separating the, uh, the retroflex applicants from the hollow applicants. That's his great uh, contribution to science, yeah, if you like. I mean, maybe he also discovered something about graph theory. So let's look at that. Okay. So here are two chains of characters that the rhyme tables classify as terms, like initial, right? So uh, there they are, and we have two of them. So I'll just tell you, there are no yogi that will link them. Yeah. Um, so now the question is this, is, this is where this third principle comes up. Are they in complementary distribution with respect to something? Because if they're not, uh, he would say, eh, this, you know, even though they're going to play, you know, it's just a random artifact of the document. So we want to find some linguistic explanation for why they don't. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm about to lose you. So I'm going to do this, you know, very slowly, right? What would we need to do to say that these actually represent the same? What we would need to do is show that they are in complementary distribution 
with respect to something. So what we're going to do right now is the mirror image of that. We're going to say these really do represent two different mutuals, which means that they aren't in complement distribution with each other with respect to anything. Yeah, that's what we have to do. So what I've done here is I just put their Ryan categories next to them. Okay. Uh, and and what like what is this? this is the one like this? If you this is this is the chapter that you find this character in the chain. So it's the Ryan category of that character. Okay. And then here I've just written them in Roman for the benefit of you who uh, you know like Roman. Okay. So let's look at the rhyme spellers for leaps to these onset chains. So three rhymes are shared by both. You see that? Here is Yang and here is Yang. Here is Yu. And here's you, which should say they're not in these two chains are not in complementary distribution with respect to the rhymes. So that means there are minimal pairs, which means they have to be different initials. Uh, yeah, and oh, yeah, I was just this is because it may be easier for you to see, right? So, uh, so, so. I put in gray the one the characters that aren't relevant to the current discussion, uh, but these ones where I've left the reading. So we have we have it here and it here. That means these two are you know a minimal pair, uh, and then we have yang here and yang here. That means those two are minimal pairs. Right? So we have minimal pairs that distinguish these two uh, initials. That means these two initials are different. Okay, and then I just make it a little bit easier to see still. Okay, now you say, fine, Nathan, but your romanizations you've gotten from the chain, right? So, like, this is entirely circular. Yeah. So, what I need to show actually is that you can't link them. Is that right? No. Anyhow, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. So these are the characters whose uh, rhymes were, yes. So we want to show that we can link them. Yes, exactly. We want to show that we can link them because if we can link them, that means they're minimal pair. And if we can't link them, that means they're in complementary distribution, right? With respect to rhymes, right? If they have distinct initials, that means those initials occur in the same rhymes, which means we should be able to link these characters through their rhyme onset chains. Uh, okay, if, as are you with me? This is the sort of thing where it'd be nice if everyone said, Yes, <laughs> I'm bored out of my mind. Yeah, okay, so, um, so I'll just maybe at the risk of, of repeating, right? So we, we have sort of around here, right? We just know this that we, we here's one Shang Lei and here's another Shang Lei. And then we said, well, are these Shang Lei in complement for distribution with respect to their, their rhyme categories? And we said, no, they're not. We have minimal pairs, and these are the kind of minimal pairs, right? So this one's with this one, and this one's with this one, and either of these are with this. They form a minimal, they form minimal pairs. But then I said, but I just pulled these rhymes out of nowhere, right? As romanizations. So you say, no, 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 no. Prove to me that these are really distinguished in this book. So uh, what I've done here is I have looked up the rhyme, right? I mean, which is basically said, I've just taken the small character and made the big character, right? Uh, but now we're seeing whether this character can be, what can, what can it be linked to? In uh, its rhyme uh, stellar chains. Yeah. Okay. 
And so far, we haven't done it, which is that we haven't linked there these two onset chains using the line chains of, of the onset palette that made up the onset chains. We haven't. So you're seen. looking for the rhyme category that has uh, very complexes. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. So basically, I, I, I'm saying, uh, I'm saying, like, like, let's say this one and this one. I'm saying I'm in more pairs, but so, but now I want to prove that they're in more pairs. And the only way for me to prove that they're in more pairs is to prove that the that the rhyme chain in the chain for this one links to the rhyme chain for this one. Yeah. Okay. So. This, this is step one. We, we look up these characters, which is great argument. Then we look up the rhyme spellers of those characters, and we got it. Yeah. So, so this one links to this one. Uh, and uh, actually, we have not managed to link this one. With either of these ones yet, yeah. But who cares? Because to show that two things are phonemically distinct, you only need one minimal pair. <laughs> okay. And and you know, if I if I went further and and you know, I don't know. Well, no, there, there, there's loops actually. So we know these two aren't going to connect. Yeah, but uh, you know, maybe there's some yogi in there. We're not dealing with the rhyme right now, we're talking about interest. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, I have now proven. That these two, um, well, let's go back to here. Where was it? Uh, I've I've now proven that in fact you can distinguish the uh, reflex averages from the uh, palatal averages. Yeah. So that's the the achievement of Chun Li. So Chun Li's three principles. If this is principle two. If the rhyme spellers of two conjugate glasses belong to the same chain, then the onset spellers of these of these same two glasses must belong to different initial classes. I think maybe this is a yeah. That's what we were trying to show, right? Like so if. Just to do it again. If two rhyme spellers of two font shape losses belong to the same chain, then the onset spellers of these same two must belong to different initial chains. The rhyme spellers, yeah. So if the rhyme spellers belong to the same chain, then the onset spellers. Must belong to different chains. It's it is what we just proved, right? Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's just, where it's just where it's like walking in, in treacle, yeah. But 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 basically what he's saying is uh, it's 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 like if I want to show that uh, like it's a mirror image kind of what we're doing. If I want to show that these two uh, are the same rhyme, then they has to have different initials. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now more homework. So uh, assignment one: translate the passage in uh, the ch the chain now, where uh, Chun Li sort of announces his discovery. Where he says, "Yeah, I did. I separated the, the retroflex aperitifs from the retro from the palatal aperitifs yeah? on the model of the translation that I have in the slides uh, of L." Yeah. Now, uh, the reason I've assigned this is because I haven't been able to find it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm hoping that. Some of you, you know, find it easier to uh, look at classical Chinese uh, than I do, and and it'll just pop out at you. But uh, I have I've, I've looked and and I'm finding it hard to find. Uh, but but I feel like 
it's a little like I feel kind of guilty, you know, trumpeting this great man's achievement if, if if I can't find in the book where he actually says that's it, I did it. Yeah. The uh, the glasses are in the described as retrofits. Oh. Uh, yeah, they're called right. they're they're called right. they're, they're yeah. called like what's it shung something about the tongue and your palate. They're not. Like, yeah. well, how did he decide which of which or how? Oh well, he, did, I mean, he, he just called them this kind and this kind, which and this is one character that occurs in this one, and this is one character that occurs in this one. So he used that acrophonic principle. He he wasn't necessarily saying anything about the phonetics. Yeah. So at this point, we have version press one and version press two. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Some people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're totally. Yeah, yeah. At this point, what we what we've really done is, is shown that let's say um, I, was just, I was trying to make the converse with L, right? So we sort of said yeah. with the L, are there three L? No, there aren't three L. Yeah, but with the retroflexes, we say, are there two retroflexes? And then we say, yes, there are two retroflexes, right? Two retroflex aggregates. So we have sort of you know retroflex aggregate A and retroflex aggregate B. Now I will say that uh, red reflex aggregate B only occurs in type B syllables, and that's a that's a you know that's a, a, a sort of fronty environment. <laughs> uh, although actually the main piece of evidence that I gave for that originally was that the palatals <laughs> occur in, in that environment, and now I'm trying to argue that they're palatals, right? So okay, but look, this is what doing Chinese historical phonology is like. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so I think the, the challenge is to is not to be a skeptic, but rather to carefully keep track of what you could be skeptical of, which <laughs> as you're seeing, you know, in my case, is quite a challenge actually. Yeah, because it all inter interacts uh, a great deal. Okay, uh, and then the other assignments, uh, if you want, uh, maybe should be easier. Maybe not. Think about the same. Is identify and translate the discussion of an initial class where Chongli relies on his third principle. Okay, so what's the third principle? Well, we saw it before, but I'll just remind you of it. It's onset spellers linked in a chain belong to the same initial class, but they are but there are also those that actually belong to the same initial class but cannot be linked in. In that case, their onset spellers are used mutually. Okay, so what would that mean? That would be a case that is neither like the L nor like the uh, retroflex aggregates. And what do I mean by that? In the case of the L, we were able to link them using the yo yin. Yeah. And in the case of the uh, retroflex aggregates, we were able to decide that it was impossible to link them because we could link them through their rhyme chains, right? So what we're looking for in this case is, a, is some sh distinct shanglei in the chain that cannot be linked through their yogin and also cannot be linked through their uh, rhyme chains. Yeah, it cannot be linked through the yogin and cannot be separated. Through the fact that their rhyme chains link them, yeah. That's what we're looking for, and this would be a good. Uh, this would be a good evidence of like a, an alphon, right? Or either an alphon if you see that you know one only occurs before hyphen vowels and the other one only before, before back vowels, or a genuine textual artifact like just it's meaningless noise that they can't be used links and that none of the characters have yo yin that would link them because you could also have yo yin that don't. Provide you any new information, right? Anyhow, that's the homework. Uh, maybe it's, you know, of these two assignments, which one is more ambitious? Probably this one, because I haven't told you which uh, initials to look for, right? Okay, so uh, those are your assignments. Uh, but I would say, you know, calibrate which assignment you do to how ambitious you feel. Now we remind ourselves, these are the 36 initials of the rhyme page. 
so now what do we have? Now we have the initials of early Middle Chinese. So what have we done? Well, we've thrown out the uh, later mentors. So we've thrown these ones out. And yeah, a, a little bit, I just, you know, wave my hands at that. Uh, but uh, we, what I did say, you know, we, we found an earlier source that listed all the initials and, and didn't have them. Um, and actually, that might be actually that might be a good place to look uh, for for assignment three, because right? uh, because basically we, we want to show that uh, that 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 this is an, uh, an allophon of the the ethnic allophons of a people. That would be yeah, you can't do it because they're not distinguishing the rhyme thing. Yeah, okay, that's the in the rhyme books. Yeah. Did you have a question? What were the first to be? What is the first to be? What is the first to What is the first to be? What is the first to be? What's your problem? I do that. Don't you, don't you, haven't you seen a language with the hub before? To be honest, not yet. <laughs> okay. What's uh, not with an advocated M? What, what is it? Oh, uh, well, for the M, uh, so that's how I just have decided to write it. Uh, but if you wanted it in IPA, there is something. I think it's like, like, uh, like this or something. There's like a oh, well, maybe a dental. Yeah, uh, label uh, dental nasal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've decided I don't want to write this because it's an IPA symbol. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to say a kind of a kind of V like M. So I just wrote it in V. That's that's you know. And what is the best way of that? The aspirated F is, well, it's an F. It's aspirated. I mean, what do you want? <laughs> like, uh, uh, the, so, okay. So, what do people say about these things? One way to understand it is by the time the rhyme tables have been written, both of these had become F. Yeah. But, they were using a document that, or they were trying to explicate a document that very clearly distinguished uh, a, a, you know, a unaspirated and an aspirate version of that. So you, you can see it as kind of what happens when uh, a 12th century author is trying to explicate a 7th century text. Yeah. That's one possibility. And if you go on the next slide, there are some more problems. So yeah, whoops. I have a lot of slide. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th those are the ones that we we just, <laughs> that's what I just spent like the last hour doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Like, not these ones, but on, on the right hand side, there's a mirror coming. And there's. No, the mirror has just moved. Yeah. It was here. And then you up there. So R became no you became R. Yeah, exactly. It's how. Well, th this is well, uh, like how. I mean, like I don't know what to talk about Ryan tables and rhyme books or to talk about you know reality, but like um, <laughs> what is this character? Uh, oh, I'm maybe writing it incorrectly. Um, <laughs> what is this character? You know, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Okay, now, now. I mean, I'm not writing that incorrectly, right? What? So, what is it? Yeah, but what is it? Like, how is it pronounced? In Ru. Yeah. So, let's say the land of the rising sun. And what is this in Japanese? Nihon. Or Nihon. Yeah. Okay, so now how do you feel about na training into ra? Huh? Yeah, that's much nicer. Okay. I don't, I mean, like, I don't think particularly better about. Whatever this this is like, uh, 
with like an upside down lowercase r with a tail or something. Is that, I mean, is that right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that, right? So, like the D lazy wise retroflex. If you see the other pellicles moving to retroflex, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Moving to retroflex. Yeah, so if we want, and then this one, this, right? No, not, no, it's, oh, I never, like, I'm too indological, set in my way. What's the nya symbol? It's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit, it's, yeah, that's yeah, it. But that's a bit like that, yeah, okay. So this is the idea that this changes into this. Well, I don't know if this like, you know, I don't have any intuitions about these things. This seems like a totally natural sound change to me because I know what happened in Chinese, right? Um, the other, the other color will become red. Right? Yes, the other color will also become red. And the only thing you need to do is, well, you have to de information, change your nasal retroflex to uh, another kind of perfect. Yeah, so what we see happening, if you like, is that uh, the palatals join the retroflexes, right? But then this one doesn't have uh, doesn't have a well, yeah. So it, it kind of, if you like, it just moves into that slot, yeah. But uh, that's not how the Rhine tables analyze the Rhine tables analyze together with uh, L as a as a resonance. Uh, so anyhow, uh, now do you feel okay about these new things? Yeah, uh, and then this is um, also new, I think. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So where's the? Is there a yo here? Are giving me yos here? No. no. Under the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that's the best way to put it, but, uh, uh, but it's, it's uh, the, 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 like, you know, like in Sanskrit or Tibetan, actually, the kind of beauty of the alphabetic order so breaks down into the windows and how, right? Uh, yeah. But so we have, uh, we have the ya and we have the gamma. So this is the, the v and the ya we have in the Ryan tables. But then uh, in the same move where we get the uh, where we get the, the palatals separated from the retroflexes, uh, we can also separate out this kind of palatal, this this you know, this palatal voice being fricative. Yeah. Um, that would also be if if some of you, you know, feel like I haven't assigned enough homework yet. Uh, 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 looking at how Chun Li actually separates this guy out would also be interesting. Um, but this is sort of where, I mean, I don't know, where it's kind of, it's sort of what I hate about my own process of learning Chinese historical phonology is that, is that we, you know, in this case, it's like there was a split and then a merger. So it feels like sort of just a, a distraction to look at like, oh, you know, we had we, we had, well, originally we had, uh, this is what I started the class with, right? Originally, originally, we would have had something like uh, G and this, and then this one changed into this, and then that became uh, sometimes this, and, uh, well, no, it became always that, <laughs> yeah. And then this one uh, split where it became this and this right so um so that's like that's what's going on with this with this one which is why i started the class yeah so if you if you don't, if you don't remember then uh you know i'll share the video somewhere um but that that is also one of these shun things yeah so so uh if you like uh what are the achievements of chung chung lee they are getting rid of the the later dentals, uh, uh, discovering the palatals, uh, and finding out that there's this there's this thing which is you know sort of somehow a ya and somehow a ha, yeah that can be isolated from from both the ya and the ha. Okay, I think that's the end of.